Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Azariah, and I am here to talk to you for a wee bit about the CSM as a whole. I'm breaking this into three parts, and yes, I'm holding up three fingers right now because I do hand gestures even if you can't see me. You may realize that I have a warped sense of humor. That will come through several times during this chat, but I have the chat broken into three parts. And the way I'd like to do it is to do the first part and then give some time for questions from the floor. Okay. I do like feedback. Other, I have actually teased classrooms. Am I teaching or is this an oil painting? But we will get started and see how this plays out. The CSM stands for the Council of Stellar Management. I do assume that you all know that we're talking about EVE Online, but just in case somebody wandered in here lost, have a seat, see if you can learn anything. EVE Online started 18 years ago and a couple of weeks. And the funny thing is that a lot of people don't know this, but the CSM actually started in the second year in 2004, but not the CSM as we're talking about in present day. And so the three parts I'm going to talk about are the, uh, the three breaks are going to be the history of the CSM, the current CSM, and then the future CSM and what you can do about it. So that's the three sections that we're doing. And right now we're starting with the CSM. Uh, for links, I am putting up occasionally. I am in the uh, Discord chat in the class questions. And I have already posted the first link. So if you can't see that, I'll repost it. But otherwise, that was the first call for a CSM in 2004. And there's a couple of things I want to point out, at, out about it that are rather interesting. One is that it was not an election. You put your name forward as a volunteer and CCP would choose the people that they wanted to talk to. But they did subdivide who they were looking for so that you had a chance to, you didn't get overrepresentation of one group. So in the links description, they actually, uh, let me read one sentence to you. The group breaks down as a representative from three large, three medium sized and three small corps, two freelancers and a press person. Now this is interesting. They actually invited the press to be part of the CSM at that time. And they kept it from being dominated by one organization by limiting the amount of council members that could come from any one group. What they didn't do was do any separation of high sec, low sec or null sec. And if you know what uh, EVE Online was like in 2004, there's a very good reason for that. But at that time, they met for six weeks and it was text only. So there was no voice chat. There was nothing like mumble. And there's a good reason for that. There was nothing like mumble. There was nothing like team speak. There was no zoom. You got to remember that this is from a different time in technology. And this severely limited the ability of um, any meaningful dialogue to take place except asynchronously, which would be a little uh, interesting. They did it did have a time and it said you have to be able to be available at this specific time slot because we will be meeting over these times and no we're not going to bend it to fit your yoga class they didn't mention yoga uh, as a result the first csms were very echo chamberish would be a nice way if ccp is choosing the players that they want to talk to they are more likely to choose the players that they actually agree with this is a bias that lots of um pollsters and that sort of thing statisticians are aware of and try to avoid whenever possible so but it's the way that it ran and in that it was interesting that only a few games were actually actively sourcing out player input that wasn't just screaming on the forums a few other games did it now one of them escapes me but they did it interestingly was they took two representatives from each character class it was a MMO that had multiple character classes. So they wanted to hear from the ranger, from the wizard, from the tank, and just so that they could get across representation that way. CCP did it by separating by your allegiance or who you worked with or the size of your organization. So it, it was interesting and it was a neat experiment and it worked okay. It got them some press, especially since they actually invited press to be part of the CSM. 
But then they realized that there was a problem. And the problem actually wasn't with the CSM, it was with CCP. Now, the next thing that is big in the CSM CCP history is called the T20 event. Now, T20 was one of the devs and one of the rock star devs of his time. He um, interacted a lot with the players. He was very active. And also, there's a common cry even today for CSM of, do the devs even play the game? Well, unfortunately, prior to CSM 1, which we haven't gotten to yet, yes, they did. And unfortunately, that was not exactly a good thing. Because if you play the game as yourself, then you get tempted to favor the people that you work with, play with, align with. If CCP only allowed players to, only allowed their devs to be part of EVUNI, you would expect slowly EVUNI to be favored in decisions and organizational things and things they asked for might get pushed further up the roster than they might be otherwise. The same goes if the goons managed to have uh, complete control, so only and you couldn't be a dev unless you were a member of the goons, which people have <laughs> accused before, ludicrously. Uh, but this bias was something that was worried about, and the T20 was when one such bias came into play. There used to be a way to get uh, Tech 2 BPOs, Blueprint Originals. And it was done by a research lottery. You entered in a certain number of research points and you had a chance that a Tech 2 um, blueprint would drop to you that would be a permanent thing in the game. Not a limited copy, but a forever copy. And T20, the dev, was a member of Bob, Band of Brothers. And he actually put his sum on the scale and arranged for his people to win several lotteries. I believe about four of them. As a result, the, he, they wound up getting a couple of ammo, T2 ammo BPOs and a Sabre BPO. And this came out. I do not know the exact details of who busted him or who dragged it into the open, but it did come out into the open and it caused a huge fiasco. It was egg on the face for the devs. It was egg on the face for Bob, although they're just going, ha ha ha, we have control of everything. Bob was like that. And they gave back the BPOs or had them taken from him. I don't know how voluntary it was, but the BPOs were returned, but it did make for a lot of distrust between the player base and CCP. So CCP, one of the other devs, put together that maybe the CSM needs to be something where we're not choosing the people, so we don't have the favoritism accusations. If the players elect the council members, then they are, we are better able to say that they are player representatives than our, our hand-picked uh, fans and favorites. So the first election kicked in in about 2000 and just a second, I'm going to drag a link to the uh, chat. So give me just a moment while I'm doing the walking and chewing gum at the same time. OK, in the uh, class questions on the Discord server is the first link, and this was called the white paper. If I got the right one on and it was the description that one of the devs did for what the CSM would become. As a result, it was a neat concept and the white paper went through quite a few iterations. I'll be posting another one that was a changed white paper from around four years later. But it was, it was a concept of having a democratically elected council from the players that had better access to the devs. The key thing was that they had to agree that this council would have good access, which is a real sticking point and is to this day something that is very difficult for CCP and CSM to navigate and sometimes has a difference between one dev and the next as to how much should they tell these players. The 
first election was done uh, of a standard method, first past the post, and it had alternates. So only so many people got elected, but there was a small pool of people who could watch but not have input. And if somebody lost their office or couldn't make it, the next person got to step in. The first CSM had quite a few names that may be known to some of you. I don't know how old some of the players here are, but I've chatted with a few. Darius Johnson, who was at uh, at one point, if I remember right, leader of the goons, Deidre Val, uh, Jade Constantine, and Anna Zuni. Um, and one name I can never for my life pronounce, and speaking of bad pronunciations, Anka Seta Penka. No idea what it means or what the name was, but that was pretty much how it was said, or how I say it and how I read it. And I'll be coming back to Ank in a few minutes. The first meetings were still text. Even in uh, at 2008, it was really difficult. There were some attempts at uh, voice, but we didn't. The technology just wasn't there 13 years ago, and so there was a difficulty with having good meetings. And often the minutes would be posted, and they would literally be just a transcript, you know, not transcription, but just a screenshot and copy of what was said. Now, obviously, this brings into uh, focus the problem that if it is going to be screenshotted and presented to the public, then CCP does not dare say anything that they're not willing to say publicly. So the original CSMs did not have a lot of traction behind the scenes. They couldn't see anything before everybody else did. They could only be the voice for reaction. And this was a problem. There was infighting. There was all sorts of things going on, but they were seen almost as just almost a sounding board or an extra forum group that actually had some ac could talk directly to devs. Now, when I say talk directly to devs, I mean, uh, well, I'll get to that in the current one when I get up to it, because I was not part of the CSM one, contrary to what some people think. I, I actually have been around a long time, but not quite that long. I came in to the scene and first ran for CSM 4 or 5, lost horribly, and then just kept one, running and running and running. So I've been involved with the CSM for over a decade, just not CSM 1. The CSM slowly um, started to gain traction, but one of the funny things I found going back and doing my research was the fact that almost as soon as it was created, there were already people saying that it should be cancelled. So there's always been a faction who thinks the CSM is useless and that it should be removed from the game as a whole. And also there were accusations that the goons were going to own the entire CSM and it would just be a goon thread. And this goes back to 2008 as well. So you have this, um, there are things that are almost memes that have been around since CSM became a serious thing. The uh, difficulty with it was large that, yes, goons got elected. Well, goons represent a large pop part of the population. And by the way, I am not a goon. If uh, We'll get back to that in a little bit. But when you have a large organization and you have a first past the post election, there is really good odds that those people are going to get a lot more votes than people who don't have the support of large organizations. This went through um, CSM 1, 2, 3, 4, all had various members. And the second uh, thing I'm going to post to you, if you skim down to the bottom, shows all the people who have served from CSM 1 through 10. So this was the new white paper that came out in about, oh, what was the date on that puppy? Oh, probably CSM 10 would be about 2017, 16, thereabouts. Seeing it, it, since it has the pictures of them up to that point, then one presumes that it was not looking into the future to guess who was going to be on the CSM. 
so at that point, uh, I want to get up to about CSM 8, but I did say I'd go about 15 minutes and then ask for questions. So seeing as I've just hit my 15 minute mark, are there any questions so far, anything that you'd like me to talk about? I'm also watching the class questions to see if anything pops up there. If there's other places where this could pop up and I'm not seeing it, please let me know. I can't watch everything at the same time. So we're all, all the way up to CSM 8. CSM 8 was a big change in how the election process went. Up until then, as I said, it was first past the post, where whoever gets the most votes wins, whoever gets the second most votes also gets a seat, and they just rank them all the way down. The problem is you only had one vote per elect per account. And so if you voted and your person didn't get in the top, your vote was actually considered wasted. If you voted, if everybody voted for one person and they made first past the post, got the most votes, but had 3,000 more votes beyond that, technically those other 3,000 extra votes made a point, but they were wasted. They did not help anyone get elected. And so there was a real uh, difficulty with saying that this was a fair representation. And yes, I know this is how tons of um, democracies in the world currently work, but still there is a lot of ways to vote. It's how many people actually have a vote that makes a difference as opposed to they participated in the voting process, but they could have just as easily lit their ballot on fire and walked away. If you have a win or lose, then all the losers, even if it was a win by 100 votes, all the losers have absolutely no voice in what happened. It's either you voted for the winner and any vote beyond the 10 more than they needed was also wasted. So around CSM 8, uh, believe it or not, one of the devs, or I think a couple of the devs have been poli-sci majors prior to becoming developers. And one of the devs wanted to see if he could change how the voting process worked. So as a result, he went with uh, an Australian model called STV, which is single transferable vote, which is a model that is uh, working until this day. What happens is instead of voting for one person, you could vote for a full ballot of people you would like to see elected in an order. So you say, my first choice is Joe, my second choice is Mary, and if they don't get in, my third choice is Alphonse. And if the person got elected, all of the extra votes that got would have gone to them, they would go to the second choice, and those votes would spill over to help get them elected. If somebody was too low to stay in the running, all the votes that would have gone to them then spread up and their second choice would get those votes as well. So you have all of the votes wind up getting counted and counting for something. Even if the person isn't elected on the, your first choice wasn't elected, your second choice may get that vote. If they weren't elected, it goes up to your third choice. So it meant that when people voted, they had a much stronger chance of having multiple says or a chance to not say either this person wins or my vote was useless. It was, Okay, he didn't get in, but my second choice did, and I wonder if he got enough, and then maybe my third choice got in as well. You had a spread of value. One of the things that this meant was people who normally wouldn't have gotten elected did, because they would be the second choice or the third choice in the election, and normally they'd get hardly any votes, but this one, the main vote would happen, and the usual suspects would get their ton of votes, but once they got them, the rest of the votes on top of that start to spread down and trickle down onto other players. And so there was quite a few shocks in the CSM8 election of uh, people that you didn't expect to get elected got elected. There were uh, more public facing things or bloggers and that sort of thing that got in. There were people who ran a podcast and we saw a lot more public facing rather than just it being the heads of alliances or those designated by the heads of the alliances. The CSM at this point also um, got a lot more support from the CCP itself, where they were actually said to be a stakeholder. And I think about CSM 5 or 6, they started having to sign NDAs with uh, non-disclosure agreements 
which meant that what CCP said to you or discussed with you, you signed a paper saying you would keep your mouth shut about it for five years following that discussion. As a result, CCP was slightly more willing to talk about things behind the scenes of, we are thinking of doing X, what do you think? And the CSM could give feedback. What they couldn't do is go back to the population and say, CCP just said that they want to build a gate to stain. Instead, they had to react as representatives of that uh, group or whatever was on the table at that time. I'm using the stain gate as a meme. The thing is that the stifling of the ability to take things back to the population had both good sides and bad sides. When you could see everything that was said, you could decide whether or not the CCP, CSM was representing you. If the CSM signed an NDA, then you started f coming across the problem that they would say, honest, we're still working, but there was nothing to show for it publicly. If the CSM managed to stop or change something, they were actually forbidden from uh, saying, you know, they had a really, really bad idea and we stopped it. And unless CCP said something about it, that's where it died. So although the CSM gained more power, they also gained a bit of notori notoriety. Yeah, that's the word as being less effective. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not answering the questions till the end, but I can still read them and laugh. Merrick, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so the um, so CSM 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 had a difference in how the representation and there were still cries that the goons were running it. At one point, they were very proud of CSM, I want to say 6, when the Matani himself became um the leader of the csm because they also said the chairman was whoever got the most votes whoever came in first was automatically the chairman then there was a vice chairman and secretary this was silly once we got to this spillover because nobody got the most votes we all got the number of votes that were necessary to get us elected and the rest got spread out so it became less of a um popularity contest and more did you make it onto the council or not as a result csm 9 or 10 actually voted and dissolved offices so they said that there was no more chairman vice chairman secretary it was just a council of equals which pissed some people off because they actually like to be in charge of a small elite group and to find out that you're just the same as everybody else is beside the point the CSM early on would have votes, discussions, and they would decide what they want to take to CCP or an election to decide what they wanted to talk to, what CCP should be talking to them about. That doesn't happen as much anymore. 